Water levels can make or break your river cruise experience. If you're anxious about the impact of water levels on a river cruise that you've already booked, or you're having doubts about putting a deposit down and making a booking because of the impact of water levels, we are gonna be diving into all of that in this video. You're gonna learn about water levels and why they arise, how river cruise lines address uh, water level issues when they do come up, and what you can do for your own trip if you're already booked right now or you're thinking about making a river cruise booking. I get it. You don't want to be on the bus tour when you pay to be on a river cruise. And you don't want to miss a key highlight on a trip when you've paid so much money into it. So here are the key truths about water levels. Number one, water levels are unpredictable. A huge contributing factor to water levels is the weather. And unfortunately, no one can control the weather. Things like how much snow there was in the winter, how much rain there is in the spring, summer, as well as how hot the summer is, all contribute to the water levels and the height of the river. Now, river cruise ships are already designed with very low drafts, which allows them to pass under the bridges in Europe. But there's always some times where it's just way too low or it's way too high and it causes a lot of issues. In many cases, the cruise line may only find out on your actual sailing or a few days before that a particular stretch of water isn't navigable, which makes it hard to be notified in advance whether your river cruise sailing is going to be impacted by the cruise. This is also why sometimes when you call the river cruise line, the call center agent really doesn't know what you're talking about when you mention that you've seen something online in a Facebook group, for example, or you've seen it on a different forum. Number two, water level issues are not uniform across the river. And what that means is if you hear that there are water level issues, let's say on the Danube or on the Rhine, it might just be a certain portion of the river, not the entire stretch of the river. So sometimes it's not really a cause for alarm. Um, other times it might be a major cause for alarm. Number three, Water level issues do not affect all rivers at the exact same time of the year. This means that if, let's say, the Rhine River is experiencing low water levels, for example, in the summer, does not mean that another river, let's say the Douro, is experiencing that at the same time. Also, while conventional wisdom might say, Springtime is usually when high water levels are going to happen and summertime is usually when low water levels are going to happen. Whether high or low water levels can happen literally at any time of the year. I have done a river cruise where I've cruised in November and we experienced low water levels and I've done a river cruise in December, for example, and we experienced high water levels, which kind of did not really make sense, but this is what usually happens. Number four, history is also not a good indicator for how to predict water levels, which is really unfortunate because it'd really be nice to know that, okay, every single summer we're gonna experience low water levels and every single spring we're gonna experience high water levels, like what I was saying with conventional wisdom. But things change all the time. We are in a world where we experience a lot of climate change. So weather patterns are gonna be changing over time Time, and that is also going to impact what happens on the rivers and the water level fluctuations that happens currently in the rivers. Number five, while weather is a major contributing factor to water level issues and your cruise line's ability to sail, your cruise line's ability to sail is also impacted by local factors. For example, let's say that water level issues are presenting in and around Budapest. The Hungarian government could decide that they're going to shut down all sailings are right in Budapest. So that means no river cruise line can really sail in or out of those ports. That would then mean that your cruise line would have to move your embarkation if your cruise was going to start in Budapest to a different location. The goal of every river cruise line is to keep operating. So they're going to do everything they can to minimize the impact of the changing conditions on the river. With that, let's dive into how river cruise lines address the impact of water level issues on your river cruise. First, they modify your itinerary, they modify your mode of transportation, and in the worst case scenario, they cancel your cruise. When a river cruise line modifies your itinerary, that means that they are either skipping a port or they are changing the port that you're going to 
the visiting. When they modify your mode of transportation, they're either doing this with ship swaps, which is usually the most common way where a ship would sail to uh, the part of the river where they can't navigate anymore. And then they'd move everybody from that ship to the ship on the other side of that portion that they can't navigate through. And so anyone who's coming from the other direction is moving to your ship and you from your current ship are moving to the other ship and then the sailings continue that way. The other way in which they modify your transportation is using buses to transfer you. And really sometimes there is no other way to do this than that. And I know this is probably where a lot of people get really upset because you've paid a lot of money for your river cruise. Now, depending on the cruise line you've booked with, some river cruise lines do provide compensation when that is done, especially when they're using hotels, for example, to accommodate guests because your ship literally cannot sail through the river anymore. Now, when the cruise line cancels your river cruise, it's really because there's just way too many disruptions to that itinerary or to that navigation that it's not even worth it for them to operate that cruise anymore. Now, like I said before, this is really the last resort. Most river cruises, their goal is to operate as much as possible. It's not really in their forte, if I can say, to want to immediately cancel a river cruise. When a river cruise line cancels your river cruise, they would give you the option either to get a refund or to get a future cruise credit. Just in a side tip, make sure you keep the dates and keep track of the dates of the validity of your future cruise credit. So what can you do when you are presented with water level issues and you already booked on a river cruise? Here are my three tips. Number one, keep calm and keep cruising. I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's important to, first of all, before panicking, looking at your itinerary, looking at what updates they are currently about what is going on on the rivers and then making an appropriate decision from there. Number two, if you've got insurance to cover your cancellations and you know that this is it, you would rather cancel your river cruise, then I say go ahead and cancel your river cruise because then you can get your money back through your insurance. Number three, it may be better for you to hold off from canceling and actually looking at updates and waiting for the river cruise line themselves to cancel. Here is why. When a river cruise line cancels the river cruise, any changes and adjustments that you would like to make to that river cruise is not subject to their cancellation terms. However, if you were to cancel that river cruise before they did, you would be subject to the cancellation terms, which could mean that you are going to be losing your deposit or you're going to be losing whatever you have paid towards that cruise up until that point. This is also the reason why having insurance or cancellation insurance is very important to protect your investment. So what if you haven't even made your booking yet? You're still in the plan planning stages, you're still considering different river cruise lines and are about to make a deposit. I've got three tips for you as well. Number one, keep in mind that water levels are always fluctuating and conditions are always bound to change. So whatever the conditions are today when you are planning your river cruise might not be the same conditions when you actually pay for your deposit and they might not be the same conditions when you're actually getting closer to your cruise. So you have a lot of resources available to you. For example, you can join Facebook groups. There are a lot of Facebook groups out there with travelers who are currently in cruises who are giving live updates about what the conditions of the rivers are. I find that those are really valuable tools. That's a valuable resource, I should say, rather than a tool for you to use and to be able to monitor what is going on for the specific river you're traveling on and for your sailing. You can also join things like cruise critic forums as well as the River Cruise Advisor Forum. I will put the links to the River Cruise Advisor Forum as well as Cruise Critic in the description box below. My third tip if you've not made a booking yet for your river cruises, you still have the option to pick an alternate date. Let's say you're very worried about the summer and the chances of low water levels affecting the experience of your cruise. You can pick an alternate date. You can pick something in the fall. You can pick something in the spring. You could even change the destination that you would want to do your river cruise, for example. So those are all available to you. There are also websites, for example, that give 
updates on the current conditions of the rivers. Europe is a perfect destination for this. I will put the link to some of the websites I found um, that give basically live weekly updates on the conditions of the river. Some river cruise lines also post updates on their website, but keep in mind that this might not be as up to date as for example, being on a forum where they are actual travelers on the river making updates. One more tip, even after you've done everything in planning your river cruise and you have put your insurance together and you have checked that everything is all good, still keep an open mind. Because here's the thing, interruptions do happen even for the best planned trips. It could be water levels, it could be an injury, it could be COVID. If you'd like to learn about my experience with COVID on a river cruise, watch the next video right here. Till then, take care and I'll see you in the next video.